Hello and welcome back to video 5 of the Gameplay Ability System Setup. I'm Thomas M. And this video, we're going to look at our first passive ability. And we're going to be looking at the wait for attribute value changed function. And we're going to talk about how passive abilities work in the Gameplay Ability System. If you enjoy this tutorial, you want to see more of them, please like or subscribe. Ring that bell. Really helps us get more people to watch our videos, which helps us make more of them. Thanks for watching. Let's get right into it. So as of now, we have set up our attributes inside of our player. We've created a debugging system so that we can view them inside of the game. We can see our speed, our health, and our damage mod. And now what we're going to do is make these attributes actually do something because right now they're just numbers. So let's start with speed. What we want to actually do is every time we change our attribute value speed, we want to set the max walk speed in our player character class to whatever our speed attribute value is. In order to do this, we're going to create a passive gameplay ability. Now, there's a million different ways to do this. I wanted to do an example of a passive ability, something using this wait for attribute changed function because this is much more widely applicable and it's really going to give you a better example of how to use the system much less than giving you a good answer for this problem sort of thing. All right, so we are going to first jump back into C++ into our player character and we're gonna give them some passive abilities. So we're gonna give them the ability to have passive abilities kind of exactly how we did this debugging passive abilities we want to just create another one that's our starting passive abilities for things that aren't debugging next we're gonna save this jump back over into unreal and compile and we will get started making our ability so this is a player ability we're gonna go ahead and right click Gameplay Ability Blueprint, inheriting from the Gameplay Ability, this is GA Speed Passive, and we're going to pop that open. First thing we're going to do is we're going to jump over here to our instancing policy and make sure that this is instance per actor, and we'll go ahead and give this one an ability tag. So we haven't talked about the gameplay tag system yet. However, the tags is really where you start to see the true power of this system. So when you have a gameplay ability with a tag, so you can block the other abilities with different tags. Like I could have this speed passive be blocked by something else that says, I'm not gonna be able to change my speed for a while. I'm locked in for whatever reason. And I could just block this tag and block the ability to fire the event. I could cancel it with something else. I could you know, block other abilities from activating. I could require the owner to have a, a tag before I'm able to activate. There's all sorts of different uses of these tags. We'll touch on them as we go. At the end of the day, know that they are not string.compares, but know that these gameplay tags are actually incredibly clever. They create a cascading form of enumerations that I have no idea how it all works, but sorting through them is incredibly lightweight and efficient. So something to think about that you can have 300 of these and not really worry about it, because again, you're not doing that string.compare, you're not doing that expensive call, you're doing a switch on an enum, which is one of the cheapest things you can do in a C++ game. We're going to go ahead and add a tag here to this ability. We'll just give it something pretty generic. We'll do ability passive dot speed dot set char speed and set character speed, right? So I just sort of generically say we're probably going to want a category for ability tags themselves, right? We'll probably want to have a subcategory there of active passive abilities and then we'll want something that's you know speed based passive abilities you know we'll probably want different things besides speed you know we'll probably want each one of the attributes to have their own subcategory and then we'll have additional subcategories for like hero types or whatever other sorts of things you do in your game obviously a lot of this is designed to be catered for your game so we're trying to keep this as generic as possible so we will just create a tag here for our ability to make sure that we have a tag on it and we don't have any other tags or anything else to really worry about right now so we're just going to leave the rest of this blank and then to get rid of this and we will just call for wait for attribute change 
This can be called in any gameplay ability. This is a default ability task. It's also incredibly handy, to be honest. You want player attribute speed. And we're gonna promote this to a variable. So you can compile and see that it's enough speed. Looks good. Then we don't need to make sure that we have tags. So this is another way that we can use those tags. We we'll wanna make sure that the source has tags or doesn't have these tags before we fire off this change event here. So because our gameplay ability is owned by our player, we put it on our player in the begin play function in our C++ class. We know that we don't need to have an external owner here. We should be able to just run this function just fine. All right, and then when we do get the only actor, so when we do change the attribute what we want to do is we want to change the movement speed on our player character so we need to get the owning actor from our actor info pass this to a third person character now if you're groaning right now that's a good thing you're a good coder i like to do a player gameplay ability super class that sets a player pawn reference and then I can pull that from a static reference to the player pawn from inside the class so that I only have to cast it once through the entire game on begin play. And then I can just read it from the ability statically. For this project, for all intents and purposes and what we're doing, this isn't the end of the world. You know, just to make sure that we do this. So since this is a passive that's firing once, I'm actually, I'm, I'm gonna rip this and do something a little different than my notes because I, this bothers me. <laughs> as a coder. If you do work with anybody professionally, working on Unreal, casting is normally something that's very frowned upon in the professional world. So I'm going to do this once at begin play. I'm going to promote it to a variable and call this player character. Okay. We're going to straighten that out. And then we're going to go into this wait for attribute change. So we're gonna get our player character and we're gonna go ahead and do a validated get just in case we lose our player character for any reason. trigger once, right? Now you can uncheck this and it'll trigger some number of times and sometimes it'll trigger twice immediately two frames apart, which we don't necessarily want when it hasn't actually changed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new custom event here called reset. We'll just plug that in to restart this wait for attribute change. So when the attribute gets changed, we're updating the max walk speed in the character movement component on our player. And then we are resetting and saying, wait for the attribute to change again. So the next time it changes, we'll know what to do. So to make sure that we know this is working, we're gonna talk a little bit about gameplay effects and modifying values. And we're gonna do that in the next video.